us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, oh. Church, good morning. You may have a seat. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to give take 10 minutes of my boyfriend of 22 years' time. <laughs> ah, he's so precious. Hallelujah. It's good to see all of you in the house. The last Sunday of the year. Are you guys excited? God is adding one more year to your life. We need to be thankful to God for that. I send you greetings from Montreal, Cross Point Nouvelle Espoir. Everybody says hi. Hallelujah. Uh, they are doing well. They are doing well. They are growing, maturing, taking the shape and the color and the DNA of Cross Point. Amen. So they are doing excellent. I'm so proud of them. Uh, because I push them, push them, push them. Amen. It's going to be two years soon that we'll be in Montreal. We're going to celebrate two years. And God has been good. So thank you all for your prayers, your support. I'd like to appreciate my daughter over here who has been uh, a source of strength. Rafi, can you stand up, please? You need to appreciate her for me because... I don't know what I've done without her. She's my intercessor, my worship leader. Uh, she's been with me and in uh, every step of the way. Amen. And she's maturing. And that peace, as long as we keep it, God is in charge. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I have uh, something I'd like we do. First of all, I would like to appreciate Pastor Jenny and John Baptist. Thank you so much. They are doing an incredible job. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you for your job. We love you. We believe in you. And we see the amazing work you're doing. Amen. So I have this word. I would like we... To put in your heart, I started it in Cross Point Dominion Center. I spoke it at Cross Point in our church. Now it's going to be the third time because we are at the end of the year. Amen. And uh, I'm going to read out of Psalm, 1, Psalm 9, verse 1 and 2. I'm reading out of the message translation. Amen. Message translation, Psalm 9, verse 1 and 2. I'm going to read it. I'm thanking you, God. Amen. From a full heart. Say full heart. Full heart. I'm thanking you. I'm thanking you. Some of you are having a hard time saying thank you to Jesus. I'm writing the book of your wonders. I'm whistling, I'm laughing, and jumping for joy. Amen? I'm thanking you, God, from a full heart. I'm writing the book of your wonders. I'm whistling. I'm laughing and jumping for joy. By the end of this service, we're going to be whistling, laughing, and jumping for joy, okay? And Bethia is going to help us. I'm singing your song, High God. Amen. Today, I want to talk about how we need to end this year on the right platform of our heart. Amen. Which is a platform of gratitude. A platform of thankfulness. Amen. So what is gratitude? It's the quality of being thankful. Amen. Readiness to show appreciation. Amen. And return kindness. So synonyms of gratitude, gratefulness, thankfulness, appreciation. Amen. Now, sometime by the end of the year, sometime we're thinking, God, I believe this at the beginning of the year and it didn't happen. And sometimes we get distracted by what hasn't happened. That we forget the things that God has done already. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. So today, I want we end this, the end of this year on a platform of thankfulness, gratitude, and appreciation for the things he has done. And today we are celebrating. We can thank God for this beautiful lady we just saw. God has brought family reunification. Amen. God has given us wedding. 
God has given us fiancé. God has given us papers. God has given this house babies. We have some pregnant mamas in this house. We can thank God for all these things that God has done for us. Some of you have bought houses. Hallelujah. Some of you did not even go for checkup at the doctors. Your health is so well. Hello. We can be grateful to God for that. And if that's all we can be grateful to God, then we have done an amazing job. A platform of gratitude. Now, some of you may say, but God, this year was tough. A year of loss, loss of job, loss of opportunity, loss of family members. It's been very hard for some of us in this house. But we can still thank God. You know, for what? For his grace and his mercy. He's been faithful. He has kept you going. Even in the midst of hardship. Amen? Hallelujah. We can be grateful to God for that. So we need to end this year on this platform of gratitude. Amen? Because if we set our foundation right, we're going to start sharp and, and high. Amen? Number two, not only we end with gratitude, but we start this year on that platform. You know, we are the children of God, and God has so much more for us. Amen? But this year, 2019... We want to be mature sons and daughters of God. And a mature son and daughter of God is not about just getting. It's about God, what can I do for you this year? I need an amen. That we enter 2019 as a mature sons and daughters of God. What more God can I bring to you? What more can I do to advance your kingdom? Because I'm a true son and daughter of God is about the business of their father. Amen? So we end this year on a platform of gratitude. And then we start 2019 as mature sons and daughters of God. Amen? Hallelujah. God bless you. But before I go, give me five more minutes. Amen? This is important what I'm saying. And I want we set our hearts right. Amen. So we're going to do more for our God. Now, when I was here, during worship, God gave me a word for somebody. And I want to share it. If you can go to John 15, 1 to 2. Any translation will do. Okay, verse 1 to 2, the Bible says, I'm the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Next. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, so that it may bear more fruit. Amen. Ampli amplified version says this. I'm the true vine, if you can put amplified. And my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that continues to bear fruit, he repeatedly prunes so that it will bear more fruit, even richer and finer fruit. Uh, today, I feel God speaking to me that there's some people in this church, you've gone through tough times, but you thought it was the devil. And today, God is telling you, no, no, it was me pruning. Turn to your neighbor and say, I thought it was the devil. I thought it was you pushing my button, husband. It was God pruning. Am I talking to somebody? You thought it was the devil. That door that was closed, you thought it was the devil. God was pruning. Amen. That button that was pushed and you thought it was your husband giving you a hard time. No, it was God pruning. Say pruning. I've been pruned. I'm being pruned. Can I give you the, the, the signification of the word prune? I, li I like the dictionary for that. So you can settle your heart right. It wasn't your neighbor. Don't look in the back. It wasn't the devil. Stop praying against the devil. To prune, to cut off. 
those relationships that were cut off of your life, it wasn't the devil, it was God. Somebody say amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus. Pruning, pruning, pruning. To cut off, to cut back parts of for better shape. Say God was putting me in better shape. I was being put in better shape. Hallelujah. For more fruitful growth. Get ready for growth, church. For those who are being pruned, God was being, making you more fruitful. Hallelujah. And I believe this is the year of fruitfulness. Amen. To cut away what is unwanted or superfluous. God was cutting you off. Whatever that was unwanted. You know, those trials, a tribulation you're going through. God was cutting you off because he wanted you to bear much fruit. Amen. So that the testing of your faith, which is more precious than gold. Hallelujah. So God is pruning someone here because God wants much fruit to come forth for 2019. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Can we put our hands together? Wow. So let me add my little note to it, all right? If you've been pruned, if you've gone through stuff this year, be ready for 2019 to bear, to receive more fruit. So th this, this is really a word of comfort, all right? that can actually encourage you to say, you know, I've been through hell and come out on the other side. Amen. God, now I understand. It was not to punish me for punishing sick, but it's because you are pruning me. And whenever a branch or a tree has been pruned, the natural thing to expect is much more fruit. Amen. So make room in your barns to receive much more fruit. Are you blessed by this word? Can we celebrate the woman of God one more time? Thank you. It is the last Sunday of the month, so I have to say a word before the closing of the month. And uh, I would like to start by saying thank you, as my wife did already, to our uh, residence pastors, uh, Pastor John Baptiste and Pastor Janie, for your great commitment, devotion to God and to the people of God and the church. You've done well, and we are proud of you. Let's celebrate them again. I would like to celebrate as well uh, our other pastors and evangelists and prophet and prophetess and ministers in this house that have stood firm, persevering, pushing through against the odds to make this place a better place every time we come on Sunday. May the Lord bless you richly. Can we appreciate them? I would like to thank our boards of directors, men and women after God's own heart, that have stood strong, pushed through. You know, it's one thing to stand and deal with your own finances. It's another thing to deal with the finances of the church. And you guys have been amazing, and we are grateful for your life, Minister Kennedy, Pastor Tui, Pastor Dolores, and uh, Brother Jeff, and myself. But, you know, I'm in, but you know what I'm saying. It is to them that I give all the praise because they've been amazing. God bless you for making my life easy. Let me put it that way. And I'd like to celebrate all the laborers, the workers, from the multimedia to the Sunday school, to the greeters, to the ushers, to the worship team, and the intercession team, and all the different teams that have come together every Sunday and every time we gather to make this place so beautiful and so amazing. May the Lord reward you, and may he grant you all your requests in 2019. God bless you. I would like also to celebrate all the men and women in this house, Sunday after Sunday, putting their offerings, their gifts, their tithes, their first fruits, their offerings. Really, God bless you. And I want to let you know, 
I pray for all the givers of this church on a regular basis. Amen. Because in your secret place, you are doing something that is like gas for a car to keep this vision moving forward. Sometimes we cannot come and say thank you and hug you all the time. But I want to let you know, we really have a gratitude heart and a thanksgiving heart for all your sacrifice and the gift you bring to this house to make it functional so we can run with the vision. I pray that God gave you your desired job. He gave you your desired business. May he enrich you and look after your children and you look after the house of the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And to all cross pointers, those who are here and those who are not, who are watching online, God bless you for being a part of this family. It is a family. We are building the house for the Lord when God is building us. Everyone, starting by me, to the pastors, to the last person who just joined this church, we are all under construction. We are all work in progress. Nobody is arrived. Nobody had it. Sometimes I have my A days, but also I have my Z days. But at the end of the day, His grace is sufficient. God is looking for people like you and I, who are just normal people, who rely on His grace and His forgiveness and His strength and His anointing to do His work. In your suffering, may the Lord comfort you. In your loneliness, may the Lord visit you. In your lack, may the Lord enrich you. Even when you have your face down, may the Lord uplift your chin so you can walk with dignity and glory. May God bless you. We love you. We believe in you. Thank you. I'd like to speak today on the subject, change your denomination. Change your denomination. Everybody say that with me. Say it again. Psalm 84, 7. Quickly, we're going to run a few verses. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. You know, Christian walk, it is not to go from here and go down. We are going from strength to strength. It is a promotion. It is an advancement. It is an improvement. It is an increase. We're moving forward. Some said they go from strength to strength. Number what? When you met them yesterday, if they are at this level, when we visit them in one year, they are now at this level of strength. So they change denomination. Where they were, they are not where they used to be. All right? Proverbs 4, 18. But the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. A version said they go from brightness to brightness. In other words, they're not stagnated. They are moving. They change denomination. 2 Corinthians 3.18. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord as being transformed in the same image from what? Everybody from what? Glory to glory. From glory to glory. Glory. In other words, there is a change of denomination. I come this morning to give you permission not to remain where you were. Amen. That's all. Because it's time for a denomination change. Because Einstein said you can solve a problem of level five with a solution of level four. Doesn't work. In other words, where you are right now, the thing you're trying to solve, you cannot use a solution that is a lesser denomination than the denomination of your problem. So we need to change denomination if we want to solve certain issues and move forward. Matthew 17, 21. This boy was suicidal. He threw himself in the water. He threw himself in the fire. He was suicidal. The disciples were empowered to cast out demons. But when they came to this case, they didn't know what to do with this boy. They did everything, and the demon didn't leave. The father came to Jesus and said, Master, your disciple pray for my boy, and nothing happened. Can you do something? And Jesus rebuked the devil at that moment, suicidal devil, and the devil left. 
Later on, the disciple came to Jesus, and they say, Master, we don't get it. You give us authority. We cast our demon. I mean, we've seen them run before us. But this case was a demon too. How come the other one ran in your name by the authority you gave us, and this specific one refused to leave? So Jesus said, you of little faith. All right? He began by there. And he ended by saying, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. In other words, you have solved problems with a solution of the same denomination or higher. But this one is a different denomination. So what used to work for you yesterday will not work for this situation. Because this one prayer alone won't do it. That's what I'm trying to get you. So you got to pack up a little bit and go to another level. Okay? You have to go to another level by adding prayer and fasting. Somebody say prayer, prayer. and fasting. I will give you prophetically, all right? This mic is not working. Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. I like this voice of mine more. More powerful. Eh? I will speak to you prophetically today. Three areas where God want to change your denomination. Because we got to go from strength to strength, from glory to glory, from faith to faith, from increase to increase. Three. Please take notes. Number one. Where God will change denomination. Denomination of wealth. Denomination of wealth. That word wealth, you can put in bracket, greatness. Don't worry, I won't take an offering. Chill up, all right? I'm talking about wealth, all right, for you. How many people here would like to change the denomination of wealth? Okay, now let me finish then I will ask you back the question because right now you don't get it. There is different denomination. There is a denomination of lack. Lack. In other words, you don't have enough. It's insufficient. It's lack. That's a denomination. And then there's the denomination of surviving. And never sometimes you have, sometimes you don't have. Up, down. That's another denomination. Then there's the denomination I'm making it. In other words, you have just enough and you have nothing else. It's you and you alone and your children. So we have lack. It's a denomination of wealth. We have the surviving. Whatever it will be, will be. Kesara, sara. Depend of the mood of God. And then we have the denomination of making it. And then we have the denomination of rich. You're making it more. After you feel to take care of everything, there's still some left. But we don't stop there. Then there's the denomination of very rich. <laughs> That's why you can give to people. And then we don't stop there. Then there's the generation of wealthy. But we don't stop there. Then there is a denomination of very wealthy. That is great. The last one is, in the denomination of wealth, you're envied by your enemies. You are so loaded, so wealthy, that the people who used to hate you, they envy you. They start by criticizing you. They start by cursing you. But now they want to be like you. Hey, uh, you know what? I, I, I feel like I can prophesy. You, you know, leave 2018, all right? Let's speak to you right now. What denomination are you at in the denomination of wealth? Are you happy to where you are at? Okay. Have you ever seen a problem and you said, oh, I wish 
a rich man could just come and start take care of this now. Have it ever happened to you? Okay, from now on, you are the one. <laughs> ah! Have you ever seen an issue and you feel like, oh, if a rich man, Oprah, if Oprah was here now and God touches Oprah's heart, this is a small problem for Oprah. Ever happened to you? Stop looking for them elsewhere. There is a denomination of wealth and you are not happy to where you are at. And it's time for you to change denomination. Move from survival to become rich, to become very rich, to become wealthy, to become very wealthy until your enemies are envying you. Who am I talking to? Manda yakata ya malagada. Hey, if you want to stay where you are, stay there. But we need to change denomination. Some of you feel rich and you think you have reached already the richness places. I tell you, there is another level. There is a better level. Let me read you a verse in Genesis 26, 12, 14. Here we are. Then Isaac sowed in the land and reaped. Somebody say he reaped. They say he reaped. Don't go after reap. Go after sow first. There is nobody who show up on a farm and, and looking for fruit and he didn't plant anything. Have you ever gone for a harvest when you know you didn't plant anything? Sometimes I wonder why Christians want to wanna have a harvest and they didn't, re, they didn't sow anything. Oh, I claim my harvest in the name of Jesus. Can you walk in the field there of the farm of your neighbor and begin to harvest? Did you sow? You didn't sow, so why are you looking for a harvest? Harvest does not come when there was no sowing. So Isaac sowed and he reaped in the same year. What did he reap? In how many years? In the same year. My God. Hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. Verse 13. The man began to prosper. Somebody say he began. There is a beginning to every dimension denomination. He began. Let somebody begin. Let somebody begin to prosper. Let somebody enter the beginning of his prosperity denomination. He begin to prosper and continue prospering. You just don't begin and you stop. That's where you go from rich to very rich, wealthy to very wealthy, and your enemy envy you. Is, is that person, are you here? I told God, you need to change my denomination quickly. No, 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 not in one year, quickly. Somebody say quickly. <laughs> Begin to prosper, continue to prosper until he became very prosperous. And the enemy envy him. Hallelujah. I don't want to be anymore. Oh, if only there was a rich man here. Ah! This mortgage will have been paid already, oh. This poor family, oh, they will be taken care. Oh, look at this single mother. Oh, my God. If there was a rich man. You know, there's somebody in this church that I love so much. It's Mama Margit. We love her. She wrote a letter to Oprah for me. <laughs> she, she's precious. She said, Oprah, please. Apostle Elijah is such a nice pastor. He loves the people and he needs money to buy the church. Please send some money so he can buy the church. God bless Mama Margit. <laughs> but I prophesy that we won't go after Oprah anymore. Are you hearing me, somebody? Somebody is changing denomination today. Read this. Psalm 19, 17. Psalm 19, 17 said... Deal with me bountifully. Deal bountifully with your servant that I may live and keep your word. The Greeks, the Hebrew said, that I may live and fulfill your assignment. Here is what David was saying. David was saying, Lord, if you don't deal with me bountifully, all this calling upon my life is zero. David is dangerous, man. He said, Lord, thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the vision. Thank you for the calling. Thank you for all the assignment. But deal with me bountifully. Because if you don't deal with me bountifully, 
I will not be able to fulfill what you call me to. There is no greater curse than to be a poor person. Poverty is frustration. Especially when you are loaded with vision. You know, when you don't have any assignment, you can be poor and be okay. But when you are filled with vision, ow, and you are poor, you suffer. Sometimes you feel like, God, it would have been better for me not to even have big vision. No. Because I, I'm he's suffering. So David prayed and he said, deal with me. Somebody said, deal with me. People deal with you by punching you. But David said, deal with me bountifully. God, deal with me bountifully. That I may fulfill your words. I may fulfill your calling. I may fulfill your vision. I may fulfill your assignment. I may take up the church and the nation. Deal with me bountifully. Bless me. Hallelujah. And here is the last denomination in the wealth dimension. It is stop counting. Read with me. Genesis 41, 49. Genesis 41, 49. Joseph gathered very much grain as the sand of the sea until he stopped counting. For it was immeasurable. You are so loaded. You don't need what go. You don't even know anymore what went out and what coming in. You don't count. You know when I'm talking about this for, for you, we are looking at one another and say like, is this is really possible? Is it not in the scripture? Yeah, but you know, I'm getting paid only this much money. Don't limit God, my friends. Did you hear what I'm saying? There's a dimension of wealth that is top counting. Even Donald Trump is not there yet. He's still counting. Joseph was there. He stopped counting. Solomon was there. He stopped counting. I pray that happened to us. At least let it happen to one person in this church. And you just make sure you remember us all. <laughs> Who's receiving that? Who's receiving that? Hallelujah. The second denomination where we will expect for a change is your denomination of grace and faith. So the first denomination of change is wealth. The second is grace and faith. Why is grace and faith important? Romans 12, 6, Paul is speaking to us. He said, I do everything by the measure of grace and the proportion of faith that I have received. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not let your mind, do not set your mind on the high thing, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinions. That's not my verse. My verse, verse 6, is it? Not 16, sir. Having then gift differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. A prophesy, a prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion of our faith. So, there is a level of grace and faith. Somebody say grace and say faith. Now, I want you to hear me clearly now. Some of the greatest frustration you and I we go through is because we don't understand this. There's a dimension of grace and faith. You know what it means? You can dream the way you want. Claim it, pray it, squeeze it, sing it. If the level of grace and faith does not match your inquiry, it's frustration. You can believe it, you can pray it, you can declare it, but you need a change of denomination in faith and grace. There is a portion of grace and faith that's allocated for each person in this church according to the assignment that is setting before you. We all function based on the portion of grace and faith that we have. So if you are more dreaming than your level of faith and grace, you will be a dreamer and never achieve anything, end up being frustrated all the days of your life, 
wondering why God is not doing this and why God promised that he didn't do it. You don't have, you have not accessed yet the dimension of faith and grace to deliver the merchandise. Even though he's promised to you. You can't, let me put it this way. You cannot op operate, you cannot operate above or beyond your level of grace and faith. Each one of us here, listen to me. Everything you have achieved for God, I'm not talking about preaching, I'm talking about life. It is based on your level of grace and faith. Everything. That's where you are at where you are today. Your denomination in which you are today is determined by your level of grace and faith. And so we push because we want to do this and do this. Do you have the level of grace and faith to build that business? I didn't say skills. Because skill won't do it. It's grace and faith. He said, even when you prophesy, you prophesy at your level of grace and faith. You cannot prophesy beyond your level of faith and grace. It's not possible. So stop pointing fingers. It's not your boss the issue. It's not your wife or your husband or your pastor or your bishop. It's not. Where you are at today is linked directly to the proportion of faith and grace that you have. And you cannot go beyond that. That's why we need to believe God for a change of denomination of grace and faith. So we can achieve greater things. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord somebody. Are you catching my flow? You can never operate above that in your life. Until you change that denomination, you can never operate above. First Samuel 17, 29, King James said, that's talking about David who came to bring food to his brothers on the battlefield. All right? He was not even recruited in the military. The boy just came to bring food. He's not even qualified. He's underage. He doesn't, he doesn't have what it takes to be there. But yet he came. But he carried a level of grace and faith that his brothers who had the skills didn't have. You see, he, he said, is there not a cause? Is there not an assignment? Is there not a calling? Is there not a duty? He's speaking this word based on his level, his denomination of grace and faith. His brothers could not say that. There are certain words that the denomination where you are will not allow you to speak. Even if you want to, you cannot verbalize it. <laughs> Until somebody show up with a greater denomination of grace and faith. And he said, is there not a cause? They say, oh no, you're not trained. He said, it's not about training. Oh, you're underage. It's not about age. Oh, you're too skinny. It's not about size. It's about measure of grace and faith. Is there not a cause? I pray God will catapult us and change our denomination of grace and faith so we can tap into achieving greater things. Hallelujah, somebody. Sometimes it's not the lack of support or money. It is just for you to change your denomination of grace and faith. Here's the last one. I'm wrapping up to let you go home. So we want a change of denomination of wealth. We want a change of, denom a change of denomination of grace and faith. And number three, we want to change a denomination of influence. Influence them for impact. We can't live our life just to hang around and survive. And then at the end of the day, they bury us. And two years later, nobody remembers us. You know McDonald's is dead, is it? KFC is dead, is it? General Sanders is dead, is it? But he left something in this earth. It keeps speaking about it. Every time you chew into one of those pieces of chicken, 
<laughs> Heaven is going, yeah. Thank you for the investment I give to you. Human beings are still profiting of it. They are still having fun. The only difference, they, they change the chicken. That's the only difference. But the formula is still there. We need to have influence. You know what influence means? It means impact. You can live your life just as an ordinary, natural, regular, passive, indifferent, lukewarm, you and you alone, colorless. Hey, you will never have influence until you dare to do what no one will do. So stay in your boat if you want. It's safe. Quietly. No noise. <laughs> Sometimes influence, listen to me, is produced by one who dare. If you do what everybody else does, you have no influence. Because you are just a repeater. Sometimes you need to jump out of the boat. And let the other 11 disciples sit down trying to save their life. And you, you step out trying to lose your life. <laughs> and you didn't sign the insurance papers. Because you believe in something. That's where your level of grace and faith goes together with influence. All right? You, you dare to step out. What about if it doesn't work? Who cares? What was the guarantee for my wife to move to Montreal and the church will work? Do you know how many churches close in Montreal? There are so many. This is the place where the strongest strongholds exist in this country. I can tell you the truth. Everything is permissible. It's like you are in Europe. Hey, she could go and fail and come back home. But you have to dare. I told somebody, the only things that I know for sure it will work, I have to make it. And leave the rest to God. Oh, what about if it doesn't work? You, you learn a few lessons. You get wiser a little bit. You get humble a little bit. Praise the Lord, somebody. So you just move from humility to humility, from wisdom to wisdom. God just added to your life. We need to dare to have influence. If you don't dare, you will live lukewarm, passive, ordinary life. We need a change of denomination in our influence. Some of you, you need to use your influence to do what no one did in your family. In your family, they all sell cocoa to make a living. It is time for you that you stop selling cocoa and you begin to sell cars. You understand? Do something different. There. Somebody say there. And after you get burned, there again. And you get burned, there again. And you get burned here. There again. As long as there is life, there is time to dare. There is opportunity to dare. This season is our time of influence. It's our time to step out of the comfort zone and to dare. I am changing denomination. I am tired of the status quo. Somebody say, oh, Apostle, how do you do that running around the place like that? Are you not tired? Do you think I have time to assess if I'm tired? No, no, seriously. Of course I am, but do you think I assess that? If you are assessing that, you will do nothing for God. Are you afraid? Do you think I have time to assess if I'm afraid? If you assess that, you will do nothing for God. Sometimes you have to rise up thinking you are the end of all and thinking you will change the whole world and dare to step out and God will meet you there. I am speaking to people who are like the four lepers sitting at the gate of Samaria. The city is under siege. And they said, if I go in, I will die. If I go out, I might die. I'd rather keep advancing. And then if I die, at least I try. Tell your neighbor it's time to try. And if you try, try again. And try again. Influence. Sometimes I feel like God is so bored with a safe church. We're so safe. Safe. He is so bored with safe people. You know, you need to be wise. Everything needs to be calculated. You know, you, 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 we, we, we have been given wisdom. You know, we are so safe. We need to dare. Too safe. 
The supernatural has been kept behind because the supernatural is only fulfilled in the life of people who step out of the, the water, on the water. Peter, you will never see that you have in you embedded the potential to be a walking waterman. You will sleep in the boat and remain a sleeping in the boat man. But until you step out, you don't know what you got. Mandolo bokasakataya. Until you step out, you don't know what is in you. Sometimes you're going to confront some challenges and you realize, whoa, I didn't know there was that much wisdom in me. My God, I am more powerful than I thought. You know, we do think we can do without God. Unfortunately. And we give credit to him. You, you don't need God to do some of the things you're doing. <laughs> That's why we get a dare. 2019, dare. Step out of the boat. Be, be crazy. Listen to me. There are people who bankrupt, even though they are so wise with finances. <laughs> you know, I'm a kind of a breed that at least when you fail at it, you know you are not as good. It's okay. But influence is impact. Influence is impact. Hallelujah, somebody. Genesis 2 2 and Isaiah 6 to 22. Look at influence, all right? Look at influence. And on the seventh day, no, did I say Genesis? Uh, Genesis 2, chapter 12 2, please. 12, chapter 12 2. Genesis chapter 12 2. And then Isaiah 60, 22. I will make you a... He's talking to a human being. I'm talking about influence. As long as you're a human being, you'll have no influence. You have to become a nation. <laughs> and I will bless you and make your... Ah! Jesus. And you shall be a... Until your name is great, you cannot be a blessing. You see, we cast a demon in the name of one person. Who is it? Jesus. <laughs> in the name of Jesus, come out. That's what you mean, influence. Even in the devil's camp, they know his name. But we live unknown to man. False humility. Crumbling there. I'm just going to make it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I need to be humble. <laughs> Don't be foolish, you know. It's important. You need to calculate everything. Do you have your budget in order? Okay, good. Beautiful. Did you pray 20 times? Listen to me, brothers and sisters. Budget in order is important. Pray is important. That's what should make you dare. Level of grace, level of faith. Where is it today? What can you do today? That you cannot do without God and still dare to do it. Okay, I'll repeat it. What can you do today without God? You can do without God. But what can you do? If God was not there, you know it's only with God you can do this. Are you daring to do it? Or you undertake only what you know you can do it? Because risk calculated, it's safe. I just want we be wild in our faith. I want we have crazy faith. I don't know. Can somebody lend me a word? Reckless faith. Another word? Huh? Another word? Bold faith. Another word? Boundless faith. Radical faith. Another word? Violent faith. Rabba Shakata. Huh? Unlimited faith. Who am I talking to? Yeah, receive it in Jesus' name. I'm closing. Joseph, listen to me. When you enter the realm of influence, your dream change. Sometimes I listen to people's dreams. They are not pizza dreams, but they are pizza provision dreams. In other words, they are in a dimension of dream where it's God giving them a solution for their life. 
is cute and is good. But there is a realm of influence that is beyond you now. Where you dream, dream like Joseph that put an end to a famine of a nation. Not your family. <laughs> the whole Canada. You, you have dreamed that you will rule Canada. Ah, now we are talking. <laughs> but you can't dream such dreams if your denomination of influence is here. It was prophesied that one person in Cross Point will become a prime minister of Canada one day. I'm talking to your children, probably not you, but your children. <laughs> talking about that, some of you need to run. Go, go, go. I mean, there, I will vote for you, for sure. And, and I will ask Cross Point to vote for you. <laughs> Somebody say influence. The, the second verse is 60, 22. I want to prophesy that. A little one shall become what? No, that's influence. And a small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, will ask it in his time. That's influence. The Bible says, I have made Israel a great nation that the wild beasts will not attack it. You know, when you have no influence, you attack. But when you are one, become 1,000, your enemy think twice before coming after you. <laughs> Are you hearing me, somebody? I'm praying this, and I'm preaching it for me and for you. This message is not just for you. I, I need to change denomination. I, I, when I do that, I want to jump, and then I don't come down. I stay there. I want to change denomination of wealth. I want to change denomination of faith and grace. I want to change denomination of influence. That's what God's put on my heart, and that's what I'm sharing with you. Now, how do we change that denomination? Number one, take note. Here are the key to secure a denomination change. We got to honor God with prayer, fasting, and giving. Somebody say pray, fast, and give. Everybody say it. Fast. We have to honor the Lord with our prayer, with our fasting, and with our giving. That's why on the 6th of January, we're going to start a prayer and fasting and giving first fruit. First fruit of fasting, first fruit of prayer, first fruit of income. That's what we're going to do to honor the Lord and to push. For, listen to me. This kind go out only by prayer and fasting. You know what it means that is so scary? If you are only praying, you will not have had your breakthrough. Is that not what's happened? Until they add fasting on, and then, bah, breakthrough came. Amen? Now, what about a threefold cords are not easily broken? Matthew 6, when you pray, when you fast, and when you give. That means there are certain things in our lives. I didn't say you. As Minister... Uh, uh, Maki said, us. There is certain thing in our lives, certain assignment that need to see the day. For every assignment, there is a birthplace. Is it possible that what we need is not only prayer? It might be there is certain assignment deep within you that need a place of birth. That you need to bring this combo together. Prayer, fasting, giving. Prayer, fasting, giving. This kind goes out not only by prayer, but by prayer and fasting. What about the assignment that can only be birthed by prayer? And the others that can only birth by prayer and fasting. And the other that can only birth by prayer, fasting, and giving. We want to honor the Lord. And here is my last verse to honor the Lord. Proverbs 23, 26. So the 6th of January, we're going to engage in a serious. Somebody say serious. And cross point, hear me. I know you're coming back during that time from your party, vacation, whatever. And, and I know sometimes we have invitation. People invite us and you have to go eat and all this stuff. But I'm going to tell you. Honor the Lord with those 21 days. It will set up the course for the rest of the year. Don't even play with it 
because sometimes we do fasting and then we, oh, he's gracefully understand. No, no, no. Be serious. Be serious. Tomorrow you will not say you didn't hear what I said. I'm speaking to you prophetically. So I'm, I'm not uh, giving you a sermon. I'm giving you a message, serious one. And, and we've seen people in this church who got a hold of what is spoken. They always eat up the fruit. So be, please hear me. This is not a fasting that you, you do usually and you feel like so relaxed. No, 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 no. This is a first fruit fasting. It will be your fast for the first of the year. The first fasting of the year. The, the first fasting prayer and first fruit of the year. You need to be serious. If you are not serious about it, God won't be serious about it. So that's why I'm pulling on your heart and on mine. The 6th of January, we engage in prayer and fasting. We're going to give you the details because we're going to make sure this church is open, especially the Saturdays and Fridays, so you can come in. We can have, we'll have the music on. You will come here. The atmosphere will be open for you. You can shandalai. That's mean praying in tongues. You can pray in tongues. You can pray the word. You can pray with worship. It will be your time to tell God, I honor you. I honor you. I respect you. I put you first in my life. And these 21 days is not for my wife. It's not for my husband. It's not for my honey tomato. It's not for anything. It is for you. Be serious. Every evening, when the church is open, come here. Pray. So God see your seriousness and your desperation and your expression of honor. Fasting. And we'll pray. If not, it's just a diet. And on the 27, it's a Sunday. We're going to bring our first fruit incomes to the Lord in this house with our children and celebrate and dance for the Lord. And I'm telling you, I, I, I don't even say I guarantee you because the word of God is more guaranteed than my word. Are you hearing me? You will see what God is going to do this season. He has pruned us so we can be fruitful. And I declare before you the theme of 2019 that I'm going to talk about on the 31st will be fruitfulness. That's what our theme is. Let's give a hand to the Lord and stand up on our feet. Thank you, Jesus. I say, Lord, change our dimension of grace and faith. So on the 6th, we can pray and fast. And on the 27th, we can bring our first fruit of income to you. Because we trust and believe in you that you will take care of us and our families. We will see you move in a way that we've never seen before. Hear me, people of God. Step out of the comfort zone. Do something you've never done before. And that's why I recommend you to give your first fruit of income to the Lord. You do something that you dare to do. I'm telling you, with a calculated mind, you cannot do it. But you dare to do something that is difficult. You dare to do something that is not easy. You dare to do something that you didn't do before or you never done before. So you can expect something for God for you. Do it on your businesses. Do it in your own income. And let come together. Nobody is wealthy to, 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 to be like Joseph yet in this church. We still have dimension to go. And that's an opportunity for us to show God where our heart is. Somebody came to me last, a couple of years ago. And, and he said, yeah, but you know, I can't give my time because, you know, uh, if, I don't, if I give my time, I'll not be able to, to do this, to do this. I said... You've been without job for six months. How did you survive? Six months, no job. And now you get a job, you can't give your tithe? Seriously? Do you have more money now than you had before? Yeah. So who sustained you when you didn't have any? We need to trust God with all our heart. In fact, I'm going to tell you, this is the ultimate sign test for me and for all of you to know which place God is, has in your heart. This is not a time for theology, doctrine, debate. It's a matter to see where your heart is. When it's come to healing and blessing you, there's no doctrine problem. Huh? When it's come to heal you, there, oh, it's God. 
when it's come to promote you, oh, no, nobody asks question about doctrine when it's come to promote you and open a new door. Grace upon you. But when it's come to pray, fast, and give your first fruit, then the theologian rise within. No, 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 no. Give your heart to God. Let hold hands and pray. This church is going somewhere. And your family is going somewhere. And your life is going somewhere. And God is changing my denomination. is changing yours. Because I made up myself to trust God on another level. Another level. I really, I say, God, I will trust you on another level. I will dare another level. Even if it's not five steps, but I'm going to take one more level. I will pray another level. I will fast another level. I will give another level. I will evangelize another level. I will choose to trust you another level. I will serve you another level. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, the blessing of the Lord that make rich and add no sorrow, it's open us as a body. You say this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. I ask you, Father, let your grace be poured upon us to empower us to do your will. To do the impossible. To do the difficult. Raise in this house men and women of influence. Make their name great so they can be a blessing. Let the least among us become a nation mover. Let the smallest among us become a thousand. Let the factor of multiplication become a reality. And in all things, raise up trailblazers, pathfinders, men and women who will dare to do something that is difficult, that the mind does not agree with, that the mind does not comprehend. Raise up people who will step out of the boat of comfort to walk on water, to do things that they have never done in their life. I give you thanks. And I give you praise in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. How many people here are less than 40 years old? Lift up your hand. You're less than 40. Lift it high. I want to see it. Drop your hand. I want you to hear me, right? Dream. You know why? When you get over 40, it's difficult to fulfill what you didn't dream before 40. After 40, you should be fulfilling what you dream before 40. So don't wait you cross 40 and begin to dream. It could be late for some. I'm just being real. 40 plus, you begin to fulfill what you dream when you were not 40 yet. Don't let people stop you from dreaming because economy is difficult, this life is too tough, the end of the world is coming, oh, nothing is easy nowadays, oh, just make it is better. We just don't want to make it. We want to be famine breakers. And therefore, I give you permission today to dream. How many people here are less than 50? Lift up your hand. Good, good, good. Drop your hand. Dream. Because there are some dreams a child less than 40 cannot dream. Oh, you didn't catch me. <laughs> because because when, you, when you get 50, you climb to another denomination. Life even catapults you to another denomination. Dreams. And begin not to dream for one year. Dream one month. Fulfill the dream 11 months. Do you get that? How many people here are less than 60? Drop your hand. Redream. No, no. Redream. In other words, dream again the dream that you dream when you were not 40. This time, you redream one week. You plan three weeks and you fulfill 11 months. How many people here are more than 60? Lift up your hand. You are the only one qualified 
to dream in your dreams. You don't redream, you dream in your dream. Turn to the younger generation and make your dream to pray so that they can fulfill their dreams. Did you get what I said? Let those have ears. Here's what God is saying to the church. I want you before you leave, we sing a song. I don't know if we have this song for Rafaela to sing. Okay. Rafaela, come. We'll leave that in one song. And after, in the songs, I will ask you at the end to hug today 50 people. Can we put our hand together for this beautiful girl of mine? Worship team. Worship team, can you come and join her? Thank you.
worship him and begin to thank him. He has been a good God. He has been a faithful God. He has kept us in our families. We just want to thank you, Lord. We want to thank you, Lamb of God. We want to thank you to the one who sits upon the throne, the one who is resurrected. Hallelujah. The one who has conquered the grave. The one who has conquered the grave. We lift you up, we lift you up, we lift you up, we lift you up, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we stand as one body, as one mind, as one heart, as one church, Lord God. We just want to thank you with the heart of gratitude, Lord. We just want to thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah.